In this video, we're going to talk about some of the lessons I've learned from using Blender to model a car. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I wanted to talk a bit about car modeling in general. I want to talk a little bit about my experience, some of the things I've learned over the years, and sort of where the tools that I use now fall for the detail modeling. So first, I think it's important to talk about the modeling process and really what the outcome is, what you want to get from it. So I've used CAD tools for surface modeling cars for many years now, over 10 years, probably when I really started to get decent at it. Uh, and I use those traditional tools, sketches and surfaces, to create CAD models of production cars for different reasons, for mostly visualization purposes. And I did this for concept cars as well, figuring out concept car bodies for clients and for my own personal use. Now, through that process, I've learned a little bit about the way to go about it, the way to use references, how, how to start when you don't have any references, and how to visualize things in 3D. With that in mind, I've also taken this next step and sort of used other tools such as NPowers, Power Surfacing and SolidWorks, as well as T-Splines Forms in Inventor and Fusion 360. Now, these tools are sort of a hybrid between poly modeling like we have in Blender and sort of the traditional surface modeling that we have in Fusion 360 and SolidWorks and Inventor and so on. Now, the reason that this is important and the reason that we want to talk about this is because these tools have very different uses. When we talk about surface modeling or poly modeling, these are two very different things, and we need to understand where they're coming from and when we might use them. When we talk about modeling in Blender, we are talking about poly modeling, and there are a couple different softwares that fall into this category, things like 3D Studio and Maya. Now, the reason that there is a category for poly modeling or polygon modeling is because that's the methodology that we're using. We're building mesh bodies. And these mesh bodies have, you know, the different control frames, the different flows, the way that the edges traverse throughout the body design. Now, there are tools that we can use inside of Blender that really simplify the process. So, for example, as we're looking at this Starian body on the left, this is a project I took on really to help progress my Blender skills. This design has a subdivision modifier. It hasn't been applied to the body. You'll notice that in the viewport, we have four subdivisions. In render, I have six. If we take a look at the underlying mesh at this level, you can see that we have a very fine mesh resolution or poly modeling underneath. If I reduce this amount, you can see that it reduces all the way down to the level that I'm currently modeling at. And what this means is when we're modeling a design, when we're working on a design, and we really want to understand what we're building, at that very basic level, we are building the underlying mesh, the underlying polygon mesh that we're creating to derive or drive this design. Now, when we're using something like a subdivision surface, when we increase that value, what we're actually doing is we're taking each of those mesh elements and we're dividing it a certain number of times. So if, again, we go back down to a level of one, we've got a single four-sided patch or four-sided polygon in this area. If we increase this, that single turns into four. We increase it again, it goes to 8 and 16 and so on as we keep going down the line. What this means is that we can model at a very low polygon count and eventually get to a fairly smooth looking display. Now the problem with this methodology is that it's not reality. Uh, we're, we're working on these models at this sort of low resolution and then we're using these tools like subdivisions to get them to look smoother. Now this is really great for concept design. It's really great for getting the body done quickly, but when it comes down to adding a lot of fine details, it's when it really becomes very complicated. Now one of the things that Blender does well is it allows us to modify the edge weighting. 
And this is something like the uh, NPower add-in for SolidWorks does pretty well, is we can control the weight of vertices and edges, and we can actually change that value as we go. So for example, if we take a look at um, the values that we're looking at, you can see the crease right here is 0.5. The ones that don't have that pink shading are zero. Ones that are fully pink shaded are, are a bit higher, so we can see 0 0.75, 0 0.1. So what I'm doing here is I'm using these to sort of uh, to sort of fake it, right? So I'm I'm adding those different creases, I'm modifying them to get the shape that I'm looking for. Now again, the underlying mesh depends on the level of subdivision. I'm controlling it at a very low level. But ultimately, when I'm done with the design, I will apply the subdivision and I'll have a really high resolution poly model. Again, this is great for concept work. This is something that if you're really looking to visualize a design, play around with it, change it, there are a lot of great tools that help us come up with that very easily. Where it starts to fall apart is where we have to begin adding certain details. So for example, in this car, I have a, a crease. Now it's not a true crease, but this is a, a detail that carries up from the fender through the door, goes up, and it sort of terminates at the back corner of this window. Now in Blender, this is a very tricky thing for us to do because I need a lot of divisions in this area in order to make that work. And you can see that I kind of have it faked with edge weighting here. You can see that I have an edge weight of one or a crease of one. I've got a half here and I've sort of carried that around. And I'm trying to work on very low polygons, a very small number of polygons in order to carry that detail. And there are other details on this design like this, this very faint crease or edge and that carries over the top of the car. We can kind of see this in the shading. Now this has some downstream effects. It, it causes problems with the edge weighting and the way that the design carries on. So when we want to get to the point where we're adding things like glass and windows or we really want to smooth out this design, it becomes problematic because we're doing it at the mesh level. Now, In reality, in a CAD surface program, something like uh, Fusion 360, then we would simply draw the entire body. We would draw a nice sketch that had all the curves that we needed and we would cut that out. Very simple, very clean surface geometry. So that brings me to the next step, and that's this Ferrari. And this is part of the one that we did in our series using forms to create a car body. Now, of course, this was not a fully detailed model. Obviously, we didn't add an interior. We didn't even finish off the rest of the detail. But it was really to highlight the process of using those form tools to create a car body. And one thing that we'll notice here is that there's no subdivision modifiers. This is a true export. This was a B-Rep, a converted surface from a form body, and I exported it as an FBX and I brought it into Blender. When we select the body and we hit Tab to go into edit mode and we take a look at the mesh, what we see here is that this is a lot of triangles. Now, this is typically how something like this would be exported. Now, all of these triangles is, is essentially the result of the export, in this case, the FBX. If we were to export it as an STL, or if we were to go into the mesh workspace in Fusion and really control how this was divided up, we could spend a lot more time trying to create a bunch of quads instead of having all these triangles. But one thing that you'll notice is, is even though we have all of this geometry, all of these triangles that happen on this body, when we look at this in smooth display, what we end up having is a really nice quality surface. Now, of course, this is sort of going the other way, right? We made this high quality surface in Fusion 360, and we brought it into Blender as a mesh body. Now, even though it's a mesh body, and even though the mesh doesn't look great, it's a bunch of triangles, we can really start to get an idea, if you look at the sort of the density of these, as they go up and over the fender, it carries down the side of the car and into this area here. And that same thing carries up over the rear fender. You can see the same thing on the top of the car. We have a lot of uh, high mesh density right here over the window between the A and the B pillars. And then we have lower mesh density where we really don't need it. The same thing with the hood. You'll notice there's more density back here, closer to the windscreen. Up here, it's a big broad surface. We don't have a lot. Up here in the front where we have a lot of detail, where we sort of have that, that rounded, that tight creased edge, you can see that we have a lot of different 
polygon that are created in this area. And this gives us a really high quality of result. So when we're looking at these two different models, they were, they were modeled differently. One was done directly in Blender. We have all of the elements that we can control directly in here in Blender. And the other one was done as a form body in Fusion 360 and it was exported into Blender. When we look at these two, we have to sort of decide what our end goal is. What do we want out of the software? What do we want out of the CAD model? If it's just a visualization, if it's, in my case, if it's to learn the tools a little bit better, understand where they work and where they don't work for certain types of things, well, that's perfect. That's certainly a, a workflow that you can do. If you're trying to make low polygon models for animation or for video games, and you wanna simply increase the resolution for rendering, again, that's a great option because we have this really low polygon model that we can then use a higher subdivision for rendering and we can get all the detail that we need out of it. We don't need to spend a bunch of time adding all of the fine details when we really don't need to. But it's important that we understand the limitations of the software and the implications of our decisions. Now, having done this for many years using surfacing tools and again, using things like the form tools in Fusion 360, it's important to understand that we're talking about two very different exports. We're talking about a mesh file, which is what we ultimately are working directly inside of Blender. And this is what our import looks like when we brought it in from Fusion 360. Or we're talking about a B-Rep surface. Now this B-Rep surface, if we go into Fusion 360, this is a high quality surface. This is something that we can export, we can have it CNC machined, we can have it um, 3D printed, which unfortunately is gonna turn it back into a mesh body. But this is a high quality surface that we can then use for production. Now, this was obviously just a quick video series where we were learning how to model this, but if you take the time to define everything properly, you can get a really good result using the form tools so if we go into our form body, we can see all of the mesh elements or the, the, the resolution of the control that we have to define this car body. Now, when we look at the same sort of resolution in something like Blender, we are not gonna get any kind of smooth surface. We're gonna get one big flat square here. We're gonna get another flat one here. But what ends up happening in Fusion 360 is we have this box display, which is essentially what we would get out of Blender if we were modeling this exact same thing. And then we have the smooth display. And the smooth display is essentially taking that external control cage and it's giving it the control that it needs for the underlying surfaces when it gets converted to what we call this B-Rep body. So again, these are two very different approaches to modeling and they have their place, it really just depends on what your goal is. So now that we've sort of talked about the differences between those two, let's talk a little bit about what I've learned through the process. Now, again, I've, I've mentioned that I really started modeling cars. Uh, even the first car that I began working on was in AutoCAD many years ago. So I've used some very primitive tools. I've used surfacing tools in Inventor, in Fusion 360, in SolidWorks, in other software. And I've also used the subdivided modeling tools like NPower's Power Surfacing, T-Splines and Inventor and Fusion 360. Um, it's also a plugin for Rhino, at least it was at some point. And I've played around with things like Alias and Alias Auto before, and obviously here in Blender. Now again, all of these have very different outcomes. And what I've learned is that some things are similar in the approach and some things are very different. So the similar things first. When we talk about controlling a body inside of Blender, when we're looking at the resolution or the number of divisions that we have on a body, this process of modeling is very similar to modeling in Fusion 360's forms using the box modeling process. You're essentially working on big flat sections. You're looking at straight lines between all the vertices, and that's how you're controlling the underlying shape. So if you're used to low polygon modeling in something like Blender, Cinema 4D, 3D Studio, Maya, then adapting that process and that flow directly to Fusion 360, that is gonna be a very easy process. 
The main difference is, other than the subdivisions that we're using in Blender, you're actually getting a relatively clean surface, a BREP surface that gets converted from the form body in Fusion 360. So there are some similarities to the modeling approach. Now, if you're using Fusion 360, you don't have edge weight control like you do in Blender. You can crease an edge, which would be a 100% or 1.0 crease in Blender, or you can have it completely curvature continuous. So in order to get something like this, where we have a crease weight of 0.5, I would actually have to insert a couple additional edges really close to it to get that same level of detail, which is what we did on this Ferrari 308. Now it was the way in which we had to get that control. So those are the similarities between the two. Where they really begin to differ is where we have hard body or hard surface modeling. So adding detail, um, so for example, if we take a look at the Starian body, I drew the entire body and I began breaking the body up by separating surfaces. I basically duplicated surfaces, I trimmed away, uh, deleted and detached the original, and then I you began breaking things up. So that process was was somewhat difficult because I found that as soon as I began breaking things up where they were in reality, so for example, this header panel and the hood, in reality, it's a fairly smooth transition and the hood just happens to be separated right at that panel. In reality, in Blender, as soon as I detach those, the curvature actually changes. It's no longer using the surrounding surfaces to control that. So that was problematic for me. And in Fusion 360, what I would do is I would break that up with sketches after the fact, and I wouldn't have to worry about detaching it here and re potentially remodeling it. So that is a big difference in sort of breaking the body up into multiple pieces. It was much easier to do as one body as a form in Fusion 360, and then come back and very easily remove certain sections by using sketches. So this is going to be a little bit hard to see, but it was very easy to take a single sketch and sort of cut this section out. And this is sort of uh, faked just for renders. There's a recess that happens right there. But it was very easy to do that. Very easy to cut this away with a surface. Uh, it was very easy to trim away sections for the headlight pop-ups. These were all very easy details to do. On the front, it was really easy for me to cut away the grill and these openings exactly where I wanted them. That is a much more difficult process to do as a mesh or a subdivided body using polymodeling techniques or even using the form tools in Fusion 360. So where I want to go from here, or really the thing that I want to explain is that both processes are, are perfectly fine, they're perfectly valid. It kind of depends on what your intent is. For me, modeling a car in Blender was somewhat an exercise in frustration as much as it was a learning tool. It was something that I've used Blender for several years doing little projects here and there, but I never really took the time to explore a lot of the different modeling approaches and tools. So for me, it was an attempt at trying to create something that um, I, have the, I have this car, so I have the reference. It was something where I really wanted to try my hand at doing a really detailed model in Blender and seeing where the sort of pitfalls were, where I could do a much better job with surfaces or form bodies in a CAD package. And then I also wanted to explore, you know, some of the benefits. Obviously, there are rendering benefits to using Blender over something like Fusion 360, animation. There, you know, there are a whole host of reasons why I would want to do that. And what I've sort of come to the conclusion was, if I want to model a car, and I want to do a really good job with the surfaces, I want a really high quality job, I'm going to use a CAD package. If I ever want to use it for production, if I'm going to be CNC machining a mold for an additional body panel, or if I'm going to be 3D printing something, I actually want to create it as a class A or a B-Rep surface using a CAD package like Fusion 360, Inventor, SolidWorks, whatever your CAD package of choice is, rather than creating it as a mesh, even though it will turn into a mesh for 3D printing. So if the end goal is to make something, then I would suggest going to a CAD package. If the goal is to make something for a digital asset, video game, a render only, creating a concept model, 
or simply just learning the tool, like in this case, Blender. Then go down the path of trying to do it in Blender or whatever program you're using. I don't think it'll be wasted time, but it is certainly a lot more efficient to do it in other packages, depending on what your end goal is. For a little bit of um, comparison, I spent uh, about an hour to model a basic car body in Fusion 360 using the form tools, and I spent about another hour detailing it. Not this Ferrari, because it was all done on video as a tutorial, but just to model a car body without doing a tutorial took me about an hour, and again, another hour or so for detail work, just to get a basic model done. For me to work on this model in Blender of this car, and obviously it's not even done yet, um, it's taken me many hours. I haven't even counted, but uh, of course it was a learning process. Again, I used it as a learning tool, but I probably easily have 15 hours, if not more, in working on that model. And I spent a lot of time doing things like trying to detail the taillights and the tag bracket area and getting the bumpers and the gaps realistic and, and working on a lot of those little details. And this kind of modeling, uh, at least for me, was extremely tricky to do in Blender and it would have been very simple for me to do in a CAD package. It was much harder for me to do that kind of thing in Blender. So spending the time on those details and, and working on those little things, it took me a lot of time to figure out how to do it. And I'm not gonna say do it right or do it correct, but just to figure out how to do it at all, because it just, it wasn't intuitive to me coming from a 3D CAD background. So at this point, I, I hope this video is helpful. I know it was just sort of a lot of chat but I do think it was important to talk about this process because it was it was something that I sort of did as an experiment, and I'm not done with this model by far, but it was something I did as an experiment. I wanted to learn the process, and I wanted to figure it out just to sort of have that comparison between doing it with a 3D CAD surfacing, doing it with 3D CAD subdivided modeling, or doing it with a poly modeling program like Blender. So that full spectrum has given me some insight into when I would pick a certain method over another. My go-to method from now on is going to be Fusion 360 forms for the majority of the big surfaces and then using the other parametric CAD tools like Fusion 360 surfacing or solid modeling to do all of the details for anything that I want a high quality surface. If I'm just looking to do some concepting I might choose Blender, but honestly, exporting a 3D CAD file from Fusion 360 into Blender is really quick. The rims were done as uh, solid models in Fusion 360, exported with the tires and everything brought into Blender, and that process was much easier, much quicker for me to model something, the tire and everything like this in Fusion 360, than it is to try to do it in Blender. Uh, and that's including all the little, if we zoom in, all the little hardware that's in the rim, the logo details, all these little recesses. This process, again, at least for me, would be extremely difficult for me to do in Blender over doing it in Fusion 360. It's really straightforward for me to follow that process there. And ultimately, that is how the part would be designed. So again, hopefully this was helpful to, to see. And as you're learning Blender or Fusion 360 or really any other CAD package, this might give you a little bit insight on where you want to spend your time and where you want to put in the effort to learn the different details. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.